And uh, today I'm going to talk about the dispersion relation of non-local and uh, local coupling problems. And uh, this is a joint work with Dr. Pablo Selaxon from Oak Ridge, uh, Dr. Kelly Wells. She uh, graduated from University of Nebraska under supervision of uh, Petronella and uh, Hayden uh, uh, from UNC Charlotte. He is a first year graduate student. And uh, here's the outline of my talk. I will first quick review the non-local and the local wave equations in 1D. And then I will review two consistent coupling methods, the cosine non-local coupling and the blending coupling. And then I will discuss, study the dispersion relations of these two coupling methods and uh, study the reflection coefficients of both methods. Then I will show you some uh, simple examples and uh, briefly talk about some of our ongoing works. So, uh, so our motivation is from paradynamics, which was introduced by Dr. Celine from 2001. And to save time, let me skip this page. And uh, our, we, we would like to compare and uh, talk about the local and the non-local wave equations. On the left-hand side, we have the local wave equations, which only involves derivative and uh, requires certain regularity because it requires computations of derivative. And uh, it uh, needs additional equations, which was mentioned in the morning section by Dr. Celine, to, uh, to model singularity, for example, fracture. But on the other hand, local problem is more sufficient, uh, computationally efficient, and the boundary conditions are relatively simple compared to the non-local one. The non-local models are usually, um, uh, usually require less spatial regularity and uh, we can model continuous media and uh, defects within a single framework. But on the other hand, the drawback of a non-local model is it's more computationally expensive and uh, it needs spatial, uh, special boundary treatments. Uh, like uh, uh, we, we need a volumetric boundary condition instead of uh, uh, um, uh, a sharp boundary. So for this purpose, we want to apply non-local models around the region where the defects occur and away from the defects, we just want to apply some competitive, uh, compatible and uh, uh, cheap local models. And uh, the goal of this talk is uh, to study the dynamic properties of these coupling models. We have a lot of existing papers addressing the static problem, uh, static properties of the coupling, such as the patch test. And uh, how about when we uh, consider the time derivative, uh, which property is relatively more important? And uh, in this talk, I want to specifically compare two coupling methods. Uh, the cosine non-local and the force-based blending. They are both patch test consistent. And uh, uh, they, also they, they, are, they also have some nice properties. And uh, firstly, we want to uh, talk about, review the cosine non-local problem, uh, the cosine non-local coupling. So here's a 1D illustration of cosine non-local. We suppose our computational domain is from negative one to one. And uh, on the left, uh, we have the pure non-local region. And uh, because non-local model need a, a volumetric boundary condition. So we have a non-local boundary condition on the left. And uh, on the right, we have a pure local model with sharp boundary condition. And in between, we have the transitional region. For the cosine non-local, the inference transition region is of sides from zero to delta, where delta is the size of horizon. And uh, the 1D cosine non-local formulations is described by three parts. When x is less than zero, fully in the non-local region, then the right-hand side is given by the non-local 
uh, expression. And uh, when X is away from the non-local region, say in the local region, then the right-hand side is the classical wave equation. And uh, in between, it's the uh, cosine non-local formulation. It's derived from uh, cons first construct uh, an energy of cosine non-local model and then um, take a first order variation to get the right-hand side form. And uh, we can prove that uh, this cosine non-local problem, uh, this cosine non-local coupling has some nice physical properties such as it's symmetric, such, uh, which means it preserved the uh, Newton's third law and uh, it's patch test consistent uh, with respect to linear uh, test function. And uh, it's positive definite with energy norm and uh, the modeling error uh, of this cosine non-local compared to the fully non-local model is of order delta. And uh, then uh, we would like to study the dispersion relation of this QNL. So in 1D, we just uh, simply insert the test function into the right-hand side, uh, into the model. Then we can compute the dispersion relation. It can be uh, summarized as three cases. In case one, when it's when the uh, X is fully in the non-local region, then we have the usual non-local dispersion relation. And uh, when X is in the local region, we have the uh, usual classical dispersion relation. And in between, we have this complicated uh, uh, dispersion relation. And uh, notice that, uh, which is highlighted by the purple, this term, if we uh, compute it, it will result in complex term. In the complex, uh, if we have complex uh, dispersion relation, it will affect the uh, the passing the amplitude of passing waves. So we focus on the imaginary term and uh, assume the wave number k is not too large. Say k times the horizon is less than one. Then uh, by a Taylor expansion we can approximately uh, conclude that the cosine non-local model has an imaginal term of order k squared times O k delta, and uh, it only appear in the transitional region. So when the wave passing the transitional region, because of the existence of complex dispersion relation, the amplitude will be either uh, enhanced or diminished and therefore it will cause artificial reflection. And uh, on the other hand, because the imaginary order is just uh, k squared times k delta, therefore it is consistent with the classical elasticity when wave number, wave number k is small enough. And uh, uh, this is the cosine non-local. And uh, then we want to also study the dispersion relation of the force based blending. And here's a simple demonstration of a 1D blending domain. And again, we have right hand side the non local region, and the local region is uh, on the left, and in between is the blending region of sites B. But uh, though, the blending though the blending region is from zero to B, the inference the transitional region is slightly larger. It's from negative horizon to B plus extra horizon. And then uh, we can have the, uh, we record the force blending formulation of this coupled wave equation. It's given by this expression. And here beta denotes a smooth blending function which only requires it's equal to one when X is in the fully non-local region and it equals to zero when X is in the local region and between zero and one when X is in the blending region. Okay, and uh, here's a simple example of 1D blending function. Where, and uh, you, you can see that it's equal to one when it's in no local and uh, when it's in local, it's purely zero and in between, it's between zero and one and uh, smoothly connect the local and the non-local regions. Then we review the properties of the four space blending. It is not symmetric with res uh, regarding the Newton's third law 
and uh, it is patch test uh, consistent with quadrat with respect to the quadratic uh, deformations. In other words, it's one order higher compared to the cosine and local, and uh, the force based blending is not a conservative system, but it has smaller modeling error uh, compared to the cosine and local because it's second order uh, horizon squared modeling errors. And uh, then, like the cosine and local case, we also insert the test, the plane wave test function to compute uh, the dispersion relation. And uh, we have, again, three parts. And uh, we especially interest in the transitional region. And uh, we found that, again, the blue term, uh, the green term suggests there's uh, the imagined dispersion relation exists. And uh, we assume k wave number k is not large, so k times horizon is less than one. Then apply Taylor expansion. We can uh, uh, conclude that suppose the blending function is C2 twice differentiable and the uh, transitional region, uh, sorry, it's the blending region, it's a typo. It's a blending region is from zero to B. Then the dispersion relation of the uh, blending method is consistent and uh, the imaginary term is of order uh, K third horizon squared over size of blending and it only appears on the transition, transitional region which is a little big, bigger compared to the blending region. And uh, uh, so uh, we have, we can also easily conclude that because the imaginary part is this order, so the blending method is also consistent with the classical elasticity dispersion relation when k times delta goes to zero. And uh, there are some popular and uh, uh, most popular blending functions used in real world implementation. The linear blending, which is just a smooth, uh, which is just continuous C0. The cubic blending, which is C1, uh, first order can, uh, continuous and the differentiable and the quintic blending, which is C2. And uh, uh, from our previous theory, we can see that uh, maybe the quintic blending can, uh, can cause least super uh, artificial reflection in the simulation. But it's interesting that in fact, uh, uh, the linear blending works the best in all our following test examples. So th that's because uh, our proposition is based on Taylor expansion. It's not uh, studied more closely into the integral, maybe a uh, more close and a more delicate uh, uh, analysis on this integration may lead to the right answer the linear blending function is the best among all the three types of blending functions. Okay, so uh, then we would like to uh, numerically plot the dispersion relations of these two coupling methods. And uh, we are especially interested in the imaginary part because imaginary part can tell us how the wave amplitude will be inf uh, inferenced when the traveling wave, when the traveling wave passing through the transitional region, we fix the horizon and uh, think of wave number between very small, uh, one percent to twenty, and then we plot the imaginary part of cosine and local on the left and the imaginary part of the blending on the right. So they looks very similar, but the uh, the order of imaginary part of dispersion relation is different. So you can see that cosine and local is about five, which is five times bigger compared to the blending. And uh, later you can see that, that because cosine and local has a larger imaginary part, so it causes more reflection uh, on the transitional region. So that's uh, that's the dispersion relation study. Then we also want to study the reflection coefficients. 
and uh, the reflection coefficient is defined by the amplitude of reflected wave over the amplitude of uh, incident wave. And uh, because of the conservation of energy and the con conservation of momentum on the interface, we can compute that, uh, we can compute it and obtain the, the formula for the reflection on the sharp interface which is given by the group velocity of incident wave versus the transmitted wave. And then based on this formulation, we first studied the reflection between the local and the local on the sharp interface, which we uh, plot here. You can see that when the horizon increase, we'll have more reflection which is consistent with our first intuition because when horizon is larger than the non-local wave and the, lo the non-local model and the local model have more discrepancy. But when horizon is small, then the non-local model is more close to the local one. And then the next thing is we want to study the reflection coefficients of the cosine non-local and the blending. And the notice that uh, these two models, they have a transitional region. So that means we have two sharp interface. The first is the non-local meets the transitional region. And the second is the transitional region meets the local region. And on these two top, we have uh, first it's the uh, cosine non-local compared with the cubic blending when non-local meets the transition. So you can see that blending has much smaller reflection. And the second uh, uh, plot is the, uh, is the reflection coefficients when the transition meets the local. And uh, this time the, the cosine and local is better. And uh, the third one, we want to compare the splice method where there's no transition the, in the splice method, there's only sharp interface without a transitional region compared with linear, cubic, and uh, quintic blending. And uh, you can see that uh, when wave number is small, say less than eight, splice is slightly better. But uh, when wave number is large, then we have splice method is much worse compared to the blending one. So this may suggest when we consider our short wavelengths traveling wave, then we should avoid the splice, but use the uh, blending method and uh, with linear blending. Sorry, Helen, so, we have another two minutes. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, then we, we study some, some uh, benchmarker incident wave. The first is cosine uh, incident pulse where we fixed the wave number at eight. And then we first plot, uh, we, we let the, the wave traveling from local to non-local and uh, plot the snapshots when it's fully in the local region, when it's just passing x equal to zero and when it's fully within the non-local region. So you can see from this uh, in, uh, enlarged part Clearly, cosine and local have more reflection compared to the cubic blending. And then we also, the next example is we studied the Gaussian incident pulse. In this wave, we have multiple wave number. When the, uh, when the width of the Gaussian pulse is small, say sigma equal to 0.2%, uh, then we have uh, more uh, components in the wave number. And uh, then we compute the relatively reflected energy um, of this, uh, all, all this uh, coupling method. So uh, you can see that cosine and local overall performs the worst and the linear blending overall performs the best. And also look at the critical wave number eight when cosine wave is equal to eight. Linear and the splice, they are relatively equal. Splice may be better, but the wave number, when wave number larger, then splice is much worse than the linear blending. 
And uh, finally, we studied the uh, traveling plane wave, which, uh, which departs from the local traveling to the non-local region. And then we plot the wave ref uh, the reflection versus wavelengths of all these uh, uh, coupling methods. And uh, uh, cosine, uh, the, the splice method is the worst compared to uh, the cosine and local in the blending. And uh, also we observed that uh, when the wavelengths, uh, when the wavelengths lambda is approximately three times the horizon, then the reflection is less than uh, say 5%. And uh, uh, we, we are trying to study the reflection coefficients of superposition the multiple plane waves. And uh, we also want to estimate the reflection coefficient of uh, Gaussian pulse. And uh, we also want to extend the current 1D analysis to 2D by studying the reflection on the principal direction. And a uh, uh, quick summary is, uh, we first find the uh, uh, waves are preserved better by, by the blending method. And also uh, dispersion relation, especially the imaginary part of the dispersion relation seems to be more appropriate to study the dynamic, dynamic properties of coupling methods. Thank you for your attention.